Following segment on KROC AM is sponsored and paid for by Mesh Besher and Spence. And Zach Bauer joins us. Zach, how are you? I'm doing well. Yourself? Awesome. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. What's our topic today? Uh, topic today is regarding domestic assaults and also just normal everyday fifth degree assaults. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and more so along the lines of what some of the collateral consequences can be for people that find themselves in those situations. All right. Explain what that means. Um, so, for instance, when a person is charged with a domestic assault or with a fifth degree assault, the court will typically set some release conditions for them to get out of typically jail. Uh, Th- they are they are equal. The domestic assault is equal to a fifth degree assault. Uh, no, not exactly. Okay. So a domestic assault can range um, in severities from first degree to fifth degree, based oftentimes upon whether a person has past history of mm-hmm. domestic assaults or similar things. Uh, but a domestic assault happens with either a family or a household member. Mm-hmm. A fifth degree assault would be more likely a situation where a person runs into a person they have. Never met before and get into some type of altercation at, you know, a bar or things mm-hmm. of that nature. But the consequences can sometimes be aligned okay. and be very similar. All right. Mm-hmm. Thanks for clarifying. So one of the things will be the transfer sometimes of a person's firearms, even while a case is pending. So this is really new legislature that was passed back in August of 2014. So when a person now comes into court on some of these charges, the judge may say that while the case is pending, even though you've not been convicted, any firearm that you possess needs to be transferred, either to law enforcement, to a federal licensed firearms dealer, or to a third party that's not residing with you. Mm. That's a recent change. Mm. Um, It is now mandatory that once, if a person is convicted of those charges, that those firearms must be transferred within three business days. There's actually forms now that have to be filled out by the attorneys to help with that transfer process to make sure that if it's going to a third party, that third party understands that they cannot give it back to that individual until they're... And that's all firearms. It's all firearms. That legislation must be geared more towards the domestic assaults, though. It is geared more towards the domestic assaults, although um, oftentimes kind of what attorneys have done in the past is try to wiggle... um, a fifth degree domestic assault, maybe to a fifth degree assault, hoping Mm -hmm. to kind of avoid that loophole. Uh, The legislature has closed up that loophole by saying if it's related in any way to domestic violence. So they'll look at the facts of the case more so than just the conviction that flows out of the case. Hmm. Okay. Uh, The other thing that's important from my perspective to always talk to people about is that even though the state law will talk about a three-year restriction oftentimes with domestic assaults, there's a federal law. Uh, the Lautenberg Act, that prohibits a person from possessing any firearms for their lifetime. Um, so even though state law may prohibit it for just a number of three to five years, typically, a federal law will prohibit you from ever possessing a firearm if you're convicted of a domestic assault. It's one of those things you need to know about, certainly before you go into court. It's something that a prosecutor or a judge is not uh, bound to tell you about mm. necessarily in court. So it's very important that you seek some type of representation to make sure that you understand that those could be collateral consequences. The other major collateral consequence that we see with people, especially in Rochester, is when it comes to their licensing, uh, professional licensing, either mm-hmm. with daycare, health care, nursing, um, medical fields. Um, if you are convicted of a fifth degree assault or a fifth degree domestic assault, so this kind of covers both those and areas. This is first time. First time. So offenders. these are first time offenses. These mm-hmm. are not secondary or third offenses. Not anybody that has a pattern of any history. A first or a first offense can carry with it a seven year disqualification by the Department of Human Services from being able to be licensed in that field. Hmm. So very mm-hmm. significant consequences. People can. Oftentimes, we'll lose their jobs. Now, there are a couple different ways to try to prevent that from happening, even if you are convicted by asking for reconsideration, which does not happen very often at all Mm -hmm. by by the Department of Human Services, or by requesting a variance through your employer. Mm -hmm. And there's been some varying levels of success with that. But Mm -hmm. the best thing to do, obviously, is hopefully not ever find yourself in that situation, Um, especially around the holidays when people get together and sometimes... um, Emotions are kind of running high because people are lack of sleep and so forth. If you find yourself in those situations, obviously try your best to take a step back, you know, even leave the house if you have to for a couple hours to prevent something from boiling over. But if you do find yourself in that situation, make sure that you're getting some advice from somebody to make sure that you're uh, going to protect yourself on the long end. Know ahead of time what you could lose Absolutely. if you uh, decided to yeah. go yeah. through with your immediate emotion right there. Exactly. Well, and it's... Unfortunately, sad, but true. Yeah, the holidays, you know, 
um, you think domestic violence, you think, you know, a husband and wife or something like that. But right. brothers, yep. sisters, yeah, any, any, the any family bl- that you can't stand <laughs> anymore. Sure. Any, any blood relatives kind of get you into a major issue there. All right. If anybody needs a uh, little help, they need to get a hold of you at Mesh Basher and Spence. How do they do that? Uh, they can contact us at 507-280-8090 or online at www.meshbasher.com. Have a good holiday, guys. All right. Thanks. You too. Take care. Bye.